With everyone so negative on Tesla stock right now, do you really want to bet against Elon? I mean, even Putin just said Elon Musk is unstoppable. Take a listen. Well, I think there's no stopping Elon Musk. He will do as he sees fit. Nevertheless, you need to find some common ground with him, search for ways to persuade him. I think he's a smart person, I truly believe he is. So you need to reach an agreement with him because this process needs to be formalized and subjected to certain rules. I mean, the fact that Vladimir Putin says this about Elon, a world leader! But yet, Wall Street thinks they understand Tesla stock and Elon and what is coming next. I would say that is very foolish. But of course, there is a point there because Tesla stock has been falling. It's easy to jump on the bearish bandwagon, whereas the rest of the markets today specifically are hitting new all-time highs, at least for the S&P 500. Your average stock has largely not played along, but today is a positive day for Tesla. Tesla shares up about 1% at the time of recording this video. We will go over the charts and where I think Tesla stock is going to go later on into this video. But let's get into all of your Tesla stock news today. As I have previously brought to your attention, Tesla has started doing vertical advertisements via short form content on YouTube shorts, as well as from what I can see, TikTok. Dave Spark, who has 8 million followers across all social channels, put tracks on the Cybertruck. That thing looks insane. I mean, it looks like it's ready to climb a snowy mountain. That is one way to customize your Cybertruck, that's for sure. Rivian has temporarily paused all deliveries of the R1T and R1S in Canada due to software issues. It's unknown when they will resume. Rivian has now introduced its new standard and standard plus battery option. This means you can now buy an R1T with 270 miles of range for as low as $66,150, including the federal EV credit and not including fees or taxes. But in case you're unaware, 2024 is already 10% over with. At this point, as a Tesla stock investor, I'm ready for 2024 to be over with. On to 2025, where brighter days are ahead for Tesla investors. Volkswagen says they are still planning on creating 25 EVs for the US. Tesla has raked in $9 billion from car makers failing to sell enough EVs. Tesla generated $1.79 billion in regulatory credit revenues last year. That brought the cumulative total Tesla has raked in since 2009 to almost $9 billion. In a new report that just came out today says electric cars are much more efficient at converting energy to motion. Quote, for every dollar of petrol you put, you get just 20 cents worth of driving motion. The other 80 cents is wasted along the way. Most of it as heat from the engine. Electric cars are much better at converting energy into motion. For every dollar of electricity you put in, you get 67 cents of driving motion plus another 22 cents of energy that's recovered from regenerative braking. That means you get 89 cents worth out. It's crazy to think 12 years ago, Tesla unveiled the Model X for the first time. Kind of, kind of insane that it's been that long. Wow, uh, the evolution of Tesla has been incredible. Tesla has now posted a video of the Cybertruck to their Weibo account over in China. The Cybertruck's known as the Cyber Dragon over there, and they don't call it a truck because if they ever wanted to get this thing road legal, well, you really don't have trucks over there and you can actually see Teslas are kind of everywhere on the streets. You can kind of point them out here in these videos. We will see if the Cybertruck does officially launch in China or not in the next coming months. Hong Kong reported 953 Tesla sales and 21.6% market share for January. 45% of these 953 deliveries were Model Y and 55% were Model 3. This was the best January ever for Hong Kong. Same is true for Europe. And year to date, you are up 
202% over the same period last year. Google Trends data for the Tesla lineup shows a sharp uptrend in the Cybertruck, going from about 19 here recently, now to about 28. The Model X has went from 9 to 11. The Model Y is seeing a little bit of decelerating trend activity, slightly going from 39 to 38. And the Model 3 has stayed the same at about 37. So overall, very strong numbers you are seeing via the Google Trends data, especially for the Cybertruck. I wonder if this is starting some of that halo effect, but it'll take some time before we will know that for certain. Global inventory numbers for the Tesla lineup increasing for the Model Y now at about 8,100 vehicles in inventory. This is up about 900 vehicles from yesterday. I'm starting to think this is more of just an increase of production kind of thing rather than people just not buying the Model Ys as much because inventory grows because of two things and two things only because less people are buying the product or production has increased. And I would argue probably production has increased. Model X has stayed pretty much the same after that big initial spike back on January 6th, uh, kind of just trading sideways here. Model S and Model 3 inventories continue to decline. Google Trends data is indicating Tesla's running about 2,000 different ads now. This has jumped 1,000 ads just from yesterday. These are some huge numbers you're starting to see, and it's now broad-based advertising, leasing, solar, Model Y, Model 3, uh, autonomous driving features, short-form content, advertising in China, in Japan, in South Korea, lots of different advertisements, Australia as well. It's really becoming a broad-based campaign, and hopefully it does help. Again, I do want to point out, advertising in a traditional sense, like a McDonald's or a Home Depot or a company along those lines, they're not advertising, so you go out and buy the product. They're advertising, so the brand stays alive in your mind. So next time you're hungry, you think of McDonald's. Next time you need to fix your porch, you think of, I should go to Home Depot, right? But Tesla, since they have never advertised before and they have such a low overall penetration in the vehicle market, maybe initial rounds of advertising do actually convert to initial sales. But in theory... Say if you were going to get a vehicle six months from now, you may think, hey, what's that Tesla vehicle that I seen that advertisement about a couple of months ago? Even, you know, uh, in your subconscious, right? It will stay there for a very, very long time. That's really what advertising is for, but these could in the short term help boost some numbers. Tesla option activity today on the small side, you have seen 469 orders totaling $104 million with a positive order value of 51%. But it is pretty dang bullish. Total call volume at 63%, put volume at about 37%, so almost a 2 to 1 ratio, two times as many calls compared to puts that are being bought. And shorting activity in Tesla seems to have really dropped off with your cost to borrow fees about a half of 1%. There's not a lot of demand right now to short Tesla stock and for pretty good reason. Tesla stock on the charts looks absolutely beautiful. As I have already talked about here on this channel that I will indeed reiterate again, the RSI was very oversold ever since about January 17th. And even before you were oversold, you had been falling ever since December 28th. Tesla stock just went positive on the RSI on February 6th. Now, in the next video, we'll talk more about the AI and how that is taking money away from Tesla and other areas of the markets. But, I mean, ever since February 6th, Tesla stock has basically been going straight up. You've been green every single day since February 6th. February 6th, you were green 2.23%. The day after, you were up 1.34%. Uh, the day after you're up 1.06% and today you're now up 1.83% at the time of recording this video. And I do think there is a long way to go for Tesla stock to the upside. Now, RSI still at 38.92. You're getting closer to neutral. Neutral is about 
50 but still i think you're at least going to have to get to about 200 dollars per share just to get back to 50 on the rsi if not maybe a little bit higher than that so i think you could overshoot that just because of how oversold and how negative people are right now on Tesla stock. Now, the MACD as well just went positive. This did not go positive on February 6th, but did go positive on uh, February 8th. So that was yesterday. You were pretty close to going positive on February 7th, but the 7th did not happen. So yesterday you went positive. These two factors alone are uh, pretty good times to go you know, bullish on a stock after a stock has been sold off so much. Typically, when the RSI goes positive and the MACD goes positive, psh, that's that's a pretty easy trade at that point, at least in the short term. Now, if something were to happen to the markets, a black swan event, obviously things could change. If Tesla were to cut prices again, obviously the rally could be derailed. But as long as nothing crazy happens that I cannot forecast right now, it looks clear Tesla stock is going higher from here. Okay, so the big news today that is causing the S&P to hit new highs, that is causing more of a broad-based rally today is this. Inflation in December was even lower than first reported, according to the government. Updates to the Consumer Price Index showed that the broad basket of goods and services measured increased only 0.2% on the month, less than originally reported at 0.3% the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics said. So inflation was actually lower in the month of December than we previously thought. That is good news for the Fed and that is good news for our markets. Scent of stocks above their 50-day moving average is up to 51.24%. You're only up about a tenth of 1% today. So believe it or not, even today, the, the, the S&P, the NASDAQ, they're moving higher, not in large part because... Other stocks are doing well, but because the top 10 biggest stocks are doing well, NVIDIA is up 3% today, Apple up over 1%, Amazon, Google, all of these stocks that are doing well, pushing the markets higher, whereas the average stock is, well, 50% of them are below their 50-day moving average. This actually peaked out on December 28th, precisely the same day Tesla stock hit a tie of about $265 and started falling. So the we the markets are actually in a pretty weak spot right now. And that's because you're not seeing inflows into stocks. Investors are not selling their bond portfolios and putting that money into stocks right now. Money is just moving from different areas of the markets. The money has moved from stocks like a Tesla, like a PayPal, like a Fubo, like your small and mid-cap stocks, and it's been pushed into AI names, into NVIDIA, into Google, into Microsoft and Apple that have large weightings in the S&P and the NASDAQ. So on face value, if you were to look at this chart, the percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average, and you had no knowledge of what the markets were doing, you would say, well, the markets would definitely not be at all-time highs right now. But indeed, they are. Sentiment today in Tesla stock tracked via stock twits shows 77 out of 100 that is categorized as extremely bullish. Not as bullish as what you've seen yesterday, which was at 88, but still a very healthy number. Message volume pretty similar to yesterday, but a little bit lower. Yesterday's number was 39 out of 100. Today is 36 out of 100. So that is categorized as low. And the participation ratio has stayed at about 39, which is on the low side but pretty close to normal next week will be very important for our markets because on tuesday you are going to get the cpi report and based on what the cpi report says well that will have direct implications for fed policy but who even cares about that because you are now back in extreme greed territory for the markets. And this is from Bar Chart, and this is CNN's Fear and Greed Index. The 10 and 3 year yield curve has now been inverted for 472 consecutive days, the longest inversion in history. At the same time, Nvidia is now $20 billion smaller than Amazon. That's actually crazy. Like if Nvidia has a really good earnings, not next week, but the week after that, Nvidia is going to be over a $2 trillion company, $2 trillion market cap, potentially becoming the largest company in the world. If it's really good and investors really like what Nvidia says, 
That's just mind blowing. And lots of NVIDIA memes starting to come out. This one from uh, Sven Henrik. He says, uh, NVIDIA reaches the moon. And Zero Hedge says, LOL, just highlighting this last kind of blow off top that we have seen in NVIDIA. This has definitely been a short squeeze and a whole lot of FOMO. I mean, just in the last month or two, you've pulled almost $500 billion into NVIDIA from other areas of the market. So it's no surprise why Tesla has not been doing well or your average stock has not been doing well. If you're not seeing inflows into the markets to support higher stock prices, well, you're seeing selling from one area and buying into another. Nonetheless, 10-year treasury yields today are flat at 4.17%. The 10 and 2 year yield curve inversion, this is the one most people look at and is the recession indicator. You're still inverted 31 basis points. It's not a recession indicator until you're actually positive here. So you've been inverting more recently. You were uh, only inverted by about 16 basis points on January 24th. Now you're almost double that today. So all looks good here. Markets are still assigning an 83% chance of a pause for March, a 17% chance of a rate cut. For May, the odds are starting to get very close here. About 49.8% of investors expect the first cut to be in May. 41.7% of investors expect a continued pause. And then June, the real debate here is whether we're going to have one rate cut or two rate cuts by June. 43.9% chance of two rate cuts and 42.9% chance of one rate cut. So only a 1% difference in pricing right now that markets are assigning whether we have two rate cuts or one rate cut. So it's almost a coin toss. That is going to go ahead and do it for this video. Hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. If you guys want to come trade with us live in real time every time we make trades, check out that link down below in the description of this video. My name is Michael Tyler. You guys have a great rest of your day and your weekends and I will see you in the next one.